to the extent that people have had your average person has had any experience with uh, AI to the extent that they have, it may be some version, maybe, I guess, arguably of like a net Netflix algorithm, maybe, or well, it was Netflix, it's Facebook, it's Google. I mean, every time something on the internet recommends something to you, there is an AI algorithm behind it. it might be a primitive AI algorithm, but there is something that is deciding what you should see next. That is how most people are interacting, but also other ways. I mean, AIs are making decisions on who gets government services. They're making loan decisions. They're making, and this is not good, bail and parole decisions sometimes. They're making college admission decisions. Pre-crime so, in some uh, cities around the country. Right. So predictive policing, where to deploy your police in advance of crimes. These are all increasingly being done by AI. If you've been in a driverless car, right, the AI is deciding when to apply the brakes. So hopefully. Um, well, it so, is deciding. We just hope it's deciding well. So what is, I mean, what, what, are, what are the implications relative to your conceptual framework in terms of, so, of AI? So I so, so think so hacking is a creative endeavor. Think of the person who discovered the carried interest loophole or that double Dutch Irish sandwich, right? It's a person, it's an accountant, it's an attorney who's pouring through the letters of the law and says, aha, I found something. And then he goes to his bosses at Goldman Sachs or somewhere and everyone says, whoa, that's a good idea. And now they package it and sell to their wealthy clients, right? That, that's the way it works. So that's a creative process that an AI could take over. And just as AIs are now finding vulnerabilities in computer code, they can find vulnerabilities in the tax code. I mean, not yet, but I, this is probably pretty near term, right? You feed it. The tax code is a bunch, bunch of algorithms. It's formulas. Right. So you feed it the nation's tax law, the world's tax law, and say, figure out how I can, I can pay less tax. And then it chugs along. And it's interesting. Will it, will it figure out? You should register your ship in Panama. You should incorporate in Delaware. You should do these things you never we never thought of. And I think there's the possibility that this kind of AI will find all sorts of new tax loopholes that we've never discovered. All right, so that's on the bad side. But on the good side, we can do that in the interest of transparency. Somebody like me, you, a university, uh, the press, a public policy organization could do this with the tax law in an effort to find and expose tax loopholes so they can be fixed or take a new tax bill and do it with a new bill and say, here's where the loopholes are. Doesn't guarantee they get fixed, right? Politics is complicated but they become public, they become part of the debate. So I think an AI that can find loopholes has really the benefit of, of helping the defense as well as the offense. But won't that run in, and, and you tell me, because I have no idea of like how, how what, what resources one needs mm. to run a program like this. But that's sort of, I mean, the similar sort of like dynamic, I, I, will you tell me, is, is that not, similar to the dynamic we have now? Like, I mean, if there are accountants out there whose job it is to find a tax loophole for their clients, theoretically, there could also have been government accountants who are said like, scour through this, find out where the loopholes are, send us a report down to Congress. And when we do the next tax bill, this is something we're going to look at. The resources are, you know, if I'm a billionaire, I have a lot more, you know, like I can expend a lot more money to save myself a lot more money than maybe the government is incentivized to try and figure it out because they also know we can figure this out, but we're going to take the guy to court and it's going to cost us. How much access will we who don't have the power, how, how leveling will AI be or will the dynamic that exists now where hacks for the powerful are more obscured and less addressed than than the not powerful. Will AI so this level is, that playing field or or, or, or or will that dynamic stay the same? So this is bigger than this conversation. When right now the AIs are being created by powerful corporate monopolies, right? It's open AI, which is which is really, really Microsoft now, it's Google, it's Facebook, Amazon's is coming online. I mean, this is what we're seeing. 
So right now, if there is going to be an AI trained on hacking the tax code, it's in the basement of you know a large multinational financial firm. Right? It is not going to be run by a university or the press or the government. Now, I don't know if that's, that's probably going to change. Right now, it takes an enormous amount of computing power to build one of these models. The models themselves aren't very big. I mean, Facebook's model was stolen a few weeks ago, and it runs on a powerful laptop. So you could run yours, but creating it is an, creating GPT-4 is probably the single most single most complicated computation in human history. It is enormously resource intensive. And we do not know yet if that is essential or if that is just the blip where we are today. Right, like, you know, right, we're doing the software for the moon landing was incredibly comp uh, computation intensive and now you can run it on your phone, right? right. So things are gonna change. But as long as these AIs are being controlled by these corporations, what you'd speak of is going to be a problem, that they're not going to do the work of the people. They're going to do the work of their corporate masters. So I think it's real important for us as society to get some of these models built in universities, in government labs that are built by us and for us and not being controlled by a corporation that is bigger than us. But at least in theory, we can imagine there being a model that you have access to, that you can do this on. There's nothing about AI that makes that infeasible. It's just that we have not that we have decided, we have not decided as a people to fund a public model. We're just letting corporations do what they want. That is probably a mistake. That sounds like definitely a mistake to me. Um that uh, you know, I hadn't it hadn't occurred to me, but uh, when you lay it out that way to give, to make this tool an exclusive, um, you know, de facto exclusive uh, tool used by the most powerful in our society, I don't think that's going to work out for the vast majority of us. I mean, I mean a lot of us played with, with uh, chat GPT and that and open AI decided, you know, to make that model available to us to play with because it wanted to use all of our play to improve of GPT course, four. of course, right. I mean, I mean, it's not benevolence. That was all right. You world, why don't you uh, do some development testing for us? We'll watch, and then we'll make the next model better. That's what Alexa and Google Talk and Siri are all doing—the exact same thing, right? They're just like, we're going to use you to train our essentially our uh, our our technology. And, and I worry about you know the Siri and Alexa and hey, okay, Google, whatever that one is. That, you know, they're doing things for us, but in the end, we don't control them. And we do not know if advertisers are allowed to manipulate the results. We don't know whether we're getting fair answers. We certainly know if we go on Amazon's website to buy stuff, we see the stuff that, that people pay Amazon to show us. We 100%. don't see the things we search for. Yes. Right? These, these are not systems that are working in our interest. We really do need AI, or at least an AI that does work in our interest. It's very powerful for us to have an AI that can advocate on our behalf. That will be enormously beneficial to us. But we have to know it'll advocate on our behalf. Is there no uh, initiative whatsoever in our government to develop this or uh, research funding? None? No. No, we don't do that. At, I mean, we, we let corporate America do the research. That's amazing because, I mean, you, you look at so, how many technologies the government has initiated and the idea. Yeah, but none we, recently. I mean, that that's 1960s thinking. Interesting. Right? That's skunk works. That's, uh, you know, our uh, getting the nuclear bomb, the space program. I mean, you know, what has the government done to for us since space food sticks? I don't know. I guess the internet, but that was a while ago. Um, is there anybody that you've seen in Congress that is like raising the alarm bell on this, uh, or is it just you know? You know, we're seeing more to more. I mean, I don't know no details, but people are starting to talk about this that there should be some alternative. I think we're gonna have some really interesting conversations about AI in the coming months. And I actually want to caution all of your uh, listeners and readers and watchers that anything you see today 
That's a limitation of the systems. Don't think of them as essential. There's going to be an enormous amount of uh, of progress in, in the rest of this calendar year. And I see things that don't work very well, that are sloppy. Chat GPT is dumb. It hallucinates. That's not essential. That stuff's going to get better very, very quickly. Wow. It's a little bit scary to me. A little bit scary. 